to to see Mr. David Turner, you know the general yeah. Turner who come in yeah. to look at the first color TV sets. He worked on that. Yeah. The color TV so I look at all the guys around me and I see that they are much smarter than I am. And they're all bitter. You know, like you say, they they you know they bought, they have a home, it's mortgage. And I say, is this what I want to be the rest of my life? No. Nope. So I didn't need to do it, so I had to eat, I had to live, I had a family to support my parents, so I went to work for RCA Victor Mexicano. Mexicano. In the 50s or, or now it's the 60s? No, it's the 50s. 50, wow. <laughs> Still it's not all in the 50s. We've got a long way to go. So, I'm an engineer, so I work as an engineer. One year later, I'm the chief engineer. Of Two course. years later, I'm the vice president in charge of marketing and sales. And uh, four years later, the president resigned. And I say, look, I want the job as president of the company. Well, they say, you're Mexican, and you're going to have a conflict of interest. <laughs> so they send guys from the United States, and I'm still the vice president. So I decided to quit. That was it. RCA was going down the drain anyway. Yeah. So I don't. I don't got a thing to do. So a guy who was a friend of mine, well, a friend, I had met him in one of the advertising agencies meeting. You know, cocktail parties and all that. He was the general manager of Revlon. Revlon. Revlon Cosmetics. Yeah, cosmetic. Door to door. So he says to me, I understand that you are going to quit RCA. I say, yeah. He says, how come? Why don't you come and work with me? We need a general sales manager. Okay. And I figured, you know. How old you were? 20 something? No, no, I was 30 something. No. That was when I met well, you. No, no, no. Yo te conocí. I met her when I quit RCA. Okay, I married when I was 37, so it must be, I, have, I must have been 35. You know, I was, I was not, I was too old already. So I, I, I started to work for, for Revlon, and the first thing that this guy, Mackenzie, he tells me, you have to go to New York to be trained, because you don't know anything about cosmetics. And I wanted to be in that field. I said, you know, selling TV sets, <laughs> the gross margin is 15%, and then yeah, you've you got to make all kinds of deals to sell. Cosmetics, you know, something that costs 10 cents to sell for $10. Big gross margin. So I took the job. They sent me to New York. And they, they put me up at the Plaza Hotel. You know, right? Uh, sure, 59th yeah. Street. At the plaza. Number one. As a trainee. And I had to you go. You were like, I made it. I had to go to 666 Fifth Street. That's where Redland was. And the first day I went over there, I met Charles Revson. Yeah. And Charles Revson, he was, he was a icon. legendary, but he was yeah. a real son of a bitch. Yeah. But he had the most beautiful secretary. You can't imagine. <laughs> All of them were like his lovers. You know, it was like being in Hollywood. You know, they were all so beautiful. So anyway, I started to get my, I started to get my training program. And after a few weeks, maybe months of doing nothing, I would go and I would sit with supposedly a a manager of a department, like the first is the, the air team department. And I'm sitting there at 9 o'clock, he's supposed to be training me. All of a sudden he gets a call. Big crisis. Go away because I'm busy right now. So, I would go to the baseball, to the, to the, uh, to the Yankee Stadium to watch baseball. I remember that that year was the first year that the Brooklyn Dodgers, or the Dodgers were already LA Dodgers. And uh, what was the name of that pitcher, that, uh, that batsman? Koufax. Sandy, Sandy Koufax. Sandy Koufax. Sandy Koufax is now playing in LA. And I said, well, I got to see this guy one day. The first two games were played in New York. 
I got to see this guy when they come back because they went for the next three games they go to LA. Well, the, the Dodgers clean up the series in four games and I'm led with tickets. That's good. The international division. And, and I want to get back home. I've been away already for three months, you know, three months in New York, living in a hotel. And, and you get bored. And I was already engaged to her, so I wanted to get back home. You love her. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> yeah, on record. You love her. No, I, Say figured, it. I figured maybe David was going to be home. <laughs> Say it. You love like, did you love that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah of course. So anyway, I tell my boss, Look at said, such a handsome. I said, I think I should be going back to Mexico. I'm already trained. Let me go back. Yeah, I want to go back. And there's a guy sitting there from Venezuela, by the way. Yeah? He was running the Revlon company in Venezuela. Uh -huh. What was his name? You can remember? Oh, I remember him well, because he pardoned me. Oh, uh, he pardoned me? Yeah, because uh, he's, you know, this is a long story. But anyway, he pardoned me. Uh -huh. Or I quit because he Pero was te son. mandó él a Puerto Rico. Pinks was his Pink. name. Pink. Jim, Jimmy Pinks, Pink. a lunchman. So anyway, we had problems. And finally, one day, we're sitting there in a big meeting. You know, the guys from New York are there. And it's like the mafia guys here. <laughs> and everybody looks tall. You know, everybody looks tall. And there. Uh, and this guy says, look, we're doing very badly. What's the matter, Jimmy? He says, well, I don't have enough the people that I have to work with do not support me. Like for instance, this guy, Mr. Khan, I had met with her three day, three months earlier. And the day that I'm going to be married, I'm going on my honeymoon. He says to me, you can't go on your honeymoon. You can get married, but you, Monday I want you here. <laughs> and I said, look, Jimmy, I'm going to, on my honeymoon. I need a week, I need two weeks. Two weeks, I had already paid the transportation <laughs> to San Francisco and I had the hotels in Vegas and everything booked. And you know, I was I was taking her to the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco, wow, that was best. expensive. So I $20 said to, at that point. <laughs> not 20, but it was like 85. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I'm already talking about this is already 1967, right? Yeah. 63. But $20 was a lot of money at that time. So, Jimmy said, no, you got to come be here on Monday because we got a crisis. I said, Jimmy, forget it. So I'm not coming back. So, a couple of months later, so we're having the meeting with the New York guys. And Jimmy says to them, look, I cannot perform, but you cannot blame me because I had people that inherit Well, no good, like uh, Mr. Khan. And I said, you don't need me, go to hell. <laughs> I made a mistake because I could have gotten three months and 20 days per year. <laughs> yeah. They were giving you a lot of money. You know, when I quit and I was picking up my things, the following morning, Jimmy Pink comes over and he says, look, don't be angry. You know, he says, you're not for this job. Don't be angry. One day you're going to thank me. And he was right. And he was right. So I went to a head shrinker in Washington. And I was going to get a job. But this was already in October. So she says, oh yeah, but you have to wait because this is not hiring. After Christmas, they'll be hired. So I left my resume and all that. And in the meantime, I'm looking for something that I should do. And I started looking around, and one day, a cousin of mine says, look, what, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to come back to Mexico and maybe have a company that I can represent. She says, well, I know a guy, his name is Milton Schaap. Michael? Milton, Milton Schaap. Milton, Milton Schaap. And he's got some sort of an electronic company called Gerald. Gerald. Gerald Electronics, and they used to make, they were owners of a company called Taco, Take Tele Television Antenna Corporation. They made antenna, rooftop antennas. Taco. Taco. Taco, Television Antenna, Steco, they called it the American. Yeah. So, she calls him up and she says, my cousin would like to come to Mexico and represent Taco in Mexico. So Milton Schaap said to me, send him over here. So at 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm there, 
this guy had a big factory, everybody's black in his factory, and he goes from position to position, and he, he knows everybody by first name. How's the baby? Jonas. How's your mother? Hell of a nice guy. Leroy. Seven o'clock. <laughs> Eight o'clock, he takes me to his office. And he says, what do you want to do? I said, I, I would like to for you to open an office in Mexico City, and I would want it. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to tell you what we can do. Cable television is a, is a thing. Is the future. I said, cable television, what's that? You pay to watch TV, you're crazy. Nobody pays. Television is free. So he tells me, look, you go to Mexico. Apply for franchises. Once we get the franchises, we'll be partners. I'll put up all the equipment, the know-how. I'll send someone to Mexico to run the company. And you'll learn. Get franchises. So I came back to Mexico. And you got to the people. When I started, I, I went to the Fed, to the you know FCC in Mexico. Cable television. What's that? What is that? They used Nobody. to call it CATV, <laughs> Community Antenna Television. <laughs> and they say, what is that? So after a couple of years, you know, I started applying for franchise, and I had the franchise with a play like playing Monopoly. I had Guadalajara, I had the <laughs> okay, so, They give you know, certain area. Yeah, you covered it. You got your, your... But there was no market, there was nothing to sell. There was no programming. So you got up on a donkey. You went up well, that was the first system that we installed. The first system in Mexico, we installed it. I made it, I, I signed up on a partnership with a guy who used to make TV sets, and who was a cousin of the big TV man in Mexico, Escarga. Claro. So we had an opening. So finally we, we, we obtained through Gerald the first contract to do a cable TV system in a place called Uruapan in Michoacan. And, uh, you know, I wanted to see the area to see if it was, you know, the kind of a place you had to have a city of a certain size that you would have enough subscribers. But it had to be located near a TV station so that you could pick, pick up their signals and be able to have something to sell. And uh, it had to be large enough. Not even stations. And there was nothing to sell except Mexican City. So this was an ideal area, 25,000 people, more or less a good, uh, economically yeah, good. So I went to see the place, I went I went up to the top of the hill where we were going to put up the antennas. To go up to the top of the hill, we had to walk on a donkey. And not on a hill, a mountain. On a mountain, yeah, it was a mountain. <laughs> No, no, no. It was El Cerro del Burro. El Cerro del Burro. El Cerro del Burro. I thought you were going up in a burro. I went up in the burro and I went I went back down on the burro and it rained. Boy, it really rained. <laughs> you got wet. And I couldn't sit for a, at least a week. Have you ever ridden a burro? How did you get power? Was huh? there electricity to put the test? Yeah. Or you have to crank it up. We had to have a, a hand crank generate started. <laughs> so you know, those the were crank, the days. You the crank? No, no, I was the director. I don't. Know. <laughs> but that was my start. So now I, I really thank Jimmy Jimmy uh, Pinks for having me. So yeah. So what happened to Jimmy Pinks? I don't know. I lost track of him. Never saw him again. He must be in Las Vegas. <laughs> wearing cement shoes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wearing cement shoes? At the bottom of the lake. Of, it, of, it, of este... Xochimilco? Xochimilco. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, you know, if you can work on for yourself, there's no limit. So how come you, you always told me that my problem else. was that I didn't have a job and you wanted me to get no, a job? No, the thing is, I didn't want you to get a job to get a job. I wanted you to be trained to be, because you have... No, yo sé.